Welcome back to Northern California, all you psycho air gun hunters, air gun man. And we get a lot of questions about setting up our gun for, you know, for hunting, our nitro piston too for hunting. Now, I'm not a professional, so I'm sure some people are not going to agree with what the way I do it, but, you know, this is the way I do it. This is what works for me. And starting off why why nitro piston for hunting well what really attracted me to the nitro piston when it first came out was you can cock the nitro piston for hours and you're not going to affect the integrity of the gas piston with a coiled spring metal spring gun or springer when you compress that spring you don't want to leave that compressed for very long because you're going to fatigue that spring and over time it's not going to give you the same velocity and then you're probably going to have to take it out and change it and all that. With the nitro piston, you can cock it for a long time. So for, for you know, especially for, for me, for turkey hunting and the blind, you can cock it for a long time. And then it's quieter, you know, a lot, much quieter than a Springer gun. 70% quieter and it can be more powerful than most spring guns. There are some really powerful spring guns out there, there's no doubt but then your average spring gun, the, the nitro piston is going to be more powerful, especially the nitro piston too. And also, less recoil is what I really like. Now you still have recoil, you want to check you know, all your stock, uh, nuts and bolts and everything every now and then just to make sure everything, because you're still going to have some recoil. you got recoil with this gun, but it's not near what you have with the average spring gun. And I really like that about it. Now for me, I'm setting up pretty much for turkeys, but I use this also for ground squirrels, rabbits, and things like that. So I would say it's an all-around hunting setup for your brake barrel. And the, the main thing you have to remember is that this is a brake barrel, guys. This is not a PCP pre-charged pneumatic. This is not a Benjamin Marauder. You know, this is not a 100-yard accuracy gun. This is going to be a 50-yard gun, okay? So I'm using it for me. I like the turkeys to be up in my face. So I'm using it anywhere from five yards out to maybe 15 yards. We're going to show you in this segment how to set up your Benjamin Trail Nitro Piston 2 for hunting. We're going to share with you guys the, some of the tools that we use and also our map, our trajectory map. And, you know, really with any new air gun, Starting out, the first thing you want to do to improve the accuracy is you need to clean out the barrels. These air guns come with like this black residue in the barrel. You want to get that out. And then also, every 250 to 500 shots, you're going to want to clean your barrel anyway. Now, with these Nitro Piston 2s, what you really need to do first before you clean the barrels, you need to get this bull barrel off. This bull barrel screws right off, and this is where your K baffle, you can see that the bull barrel it's got the K baffle is about the last four or five inches and it's got this plastic sleeve some of the guys that had problem with these cracking I think it was really just over tightening this so you can not over tighten that every now and then you want to check to make sure this is tight as well but um, you know take that off because you don't want the your gun pat cleaning patches to get caught up in the end of that K baffle and for me what I really like to do you know some of the best way to do it is get this piece of weed whacker cord and just melt a, a bulb on the end there a little smaller than your diameter of your caliber so you know we're shooting the 22 caliber and you whittle that down to a point take some of your gun patches and you know you can just work that right on there onto the end and then for me what I really like to use is just real real light thread that right down to the end. I like this JB's non-embedding bore cleaning compound. Highly recommended. In, in this bottle here would last you forever. You can see I've been using, I mean I've been using this for a year. You can see I just take a very light amount, work that into your gun patch and you want to pull you know 10 of those down the barrel and then just work about 10-15 dry patches down the barrel. So every time you need to clean it out, that's what I, the way I do it, the way I recommend. So, you know, cock, you don't even have to cock it. Just break that barrel a little bit, run that weed whacker cord down through there. What's nice about that, it's not going to damage your barrel. And you want it to be snug. That's nice and snug. If it's not snug enough, you're going to have to melt the end of your 
weed whacker cord a little more make your bulb a little bigger that was nice and snug you can see that's coming out clean I like to do that every t you know I like to do it every like 500 shots okay so that's the first thing before we even put the scope on this and we do have this center point 4 by 16 aftermarket scope picked up at Walmart you can get these for $69 highly recommend this scope over the stock scope only because uh, this you know the, the nitro piston 2 comes with the 4 by 32 scope and doesn't have the adjustable objective this 4 by 16 has the adjustable objective it's got the lighted reticle and I really like that early mornings let's get this bull barrel back on just screw that right back on don't want to over tighten that you can crack that plastic sleeve and now before we even put a scope on what we're going to do is break this gun in okay you want to take this gun and you want to shoot I like to shoot personally 500 to 1000 rounds through the gun before I even put the scope on just keep you know save that vibration from the scope but two, you know 100 to 250 rounds we've got our Crossman Premier Ultra Magnum dome I really like these dome pellets come in a 10 of 500 with a screw on lid you know that's really nice the next step would be to put the scope on the main thing there is you want to loosen all all your screws basically right so you can get everything lined up with this Picatinny rail the main thing is you want to make sure the screws line up with the slots that's why you want all this loose so you can move your mounts back and forth and usually for me I put the mounts on the second one so the second from the end here and the second from the end in the front you want to keep that all kind of loose so you can move that scope back and forth if you need to get it to where you need for your eye and then before you start to tighten everything down there's a lot of videos out there about that I'm not really going to go through that you know you want to use the crisscross pattern make sure everything is equal main thing is don't over tighten it guys if you've ever stripped a screw out on a scope you're over tightening it you don't need to go down that far and you want to be in that groove of that Picatinny rail and here's what I'm talking about that play so see you have the play in there move it to the back of that before you start tightening down those bases still haven't tightened the scope then what I like to do is take this Wheeler level 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 these things are about I don't know 20 bucks Cabela's or whatever and really it's just two levels you're you're leveling the action with the scope so the, the actions level the scopes level everything's level that's why they call it level 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 get it so anyway, with the Nitro Piston 2, there are a couple of places you with with this 3 by 9 by 32 scope that comes with the gun, you're not going to be able to put that like right there on top of that Picatinny rail. Now this is assuming that the Picatinny rail is is level, but also you can use the action itself right here on the side of the Nitro Piston 2. So if you can see that but you can put that right there or what I found is you, it's going to be the same as the top of the Picatinny rail you just can't do that like that with your stock scope because it sits a lot lower so you're going to have to use the action show you how that gets so we got that got that level and you can hold that in your gun gun mount but that one's level now we put it on top of our turret and I like to take the turret cap off do it right on top of the adjustment whoa that's level didn't have to do anything so a lot of times it's going to be like that or that you want it level with the action so right there um, if you don't have the 20 bucks to go get the wheel, the wheeler level level level, you know what you can do is what the what bow hunters do to help sight in their their third axis. You're gonna hang a hang a rope, hang a string from the ceiling, from whatever, and then 
that's you know that's parallel with the earth the string hanging down you know with like a weight on it you know, just a washer or something and then you can line up your crosshairs with that but right there and then you just want to tighten your screws crisscross pattern everybody always talks about the cool thing about the level 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 a lot of times when you're tightening your screws down the scope's going to shift a little bit so you can make sure you're not getting that and the other thing is you just want to check these spaces so that they're equal on each side all the way around when you're tightening this thing down staying pretty level right there all right let's get the scope tightened down you know before I tighten everything down you want to have everything just tight enough that you can move it a little bit and the key is to keeping these spaces I like to keep those spaces the same all the way around I want to get everything just finger snug and then before I do anything I keep the reticle reticle on there I like to mount this you know shoulder mount the gun just like you were going to go hunting and check when everything's level hold it level look at the levels look at my reticle do I like that oh yeah it looks good now sometimes you might want to slightly adjust that you know depending on the gun okay we've got the scope all tightened down and you can see we're still level we've got the action level and the, the crosshairs are level with the action so level 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 everything's level and we're ready to go and sight in now what I really like to do with this scope it sits a little bit higher I really like this Triple K brand made out of San Diego, California. It's a comb razor, cheek razor, and I like the half inch, it's a half inch model. So we've got that installed for my buddy Tom. And it's going to fit him nice on that side. So what that does is when you look through the scope with your eyes closed, you'll be below the scope without this. So when you put this on, you look through the scope. Your eye lines up perfectly. That's going to help improve your accuracy. Now, the the most important adjustment that we're going to do, I haven't really talked about, and I do this really during the break-in period, and that's going to be your your trigger. Your trigger. This is a two-stage adjustable trigger, and there's a little screw right there. How to fine tune this trigger, basically all you're going to need is a flathead screwdriver, a small one, so you want to get one of these small screwdrivers, because you're going to have to adjust that screw that sits right behind the trigger. And if you notice that when you get these guns from the factory, so let's go ahead and load this one. When you get these guns from the factory, you really can't feel the wall, the back wall. And with, you know, with a two stage uh, trigger, you want to feel that back wall before it goes off and when you get them from the and I like to do this with my eyes closed because it's all about feel okay so you're trying to feel that trigger but this is this is the stock trigger and you'll notice how it goes off before we hit the wall this is how it comes from the pretty much from the factory so it just went off before we I, I never felt a wall there it just went off so what you want to do is you want to take that screw and you want to turn that in clockwise so you want to you want to tighten it or clockwise about a half a turn start out at a half a turn or quarter turn and then you can go quarter turn with each adjustment Let's load this thing back up Now you should see, again I'm going to close my eyes on that, make sure you have a safe backdrop. Still not really feeling that. Still not really feeling the wall. Now the key to having as hair trigger as possible on these Benjamin trail guns is to screw that in just enough where you feel the wall and then stop there so let's go in another quarter turn when you feel that wall you want to stop 
screwing that screw in because that's your most sensitive point. The more you screw it in past that, it's going to take more pounds to pull. So you want to get to that point where you feel the back wall, you hit the back wall and it's solid. And then when you pull again, it goes off. Okay, so let's get this thing loaded up again. We put it another quarter turn. Just go for the feel. Don't be looking. Still not hitting that back wall. Let's go another little bit in. Some of these come from the factory. You can feel the back walls. I've some of them don't. It's like the, this is the third nitro piston two I've set up, and a couple of them were okay, and one of them was had to really adjust it. But all, you're going to have to adjust them. Okay, now there's the back wall. See, I'm hitting that wall. It's not going off. Now, that's where I like it. Be able to hit that wall. Now when you pull, it's going off. Okay, so from there I'm going to back up just a little bit, go counterclockwise, just a hair, not even a quarter of a turn, half a quarter of a turn. Just want to get right to that, there's that fine line of still being able to hit that back wall. There it is went off right after that. Now if you screw that in anymore clockwise you're basically going to have to pull more weight but I don't like it that surprise thing when you just uh, you go you start to pull it and boom it goes off I don't like that I want to hit the back wall Then have it go off right after that with as little as pressure as possible. So there's the back wall. I really like that right there. That's about as fine tuned as you're going to get it.